in the first street, second street, and Avenue J. Once they complete this shaving, I see no need to make a portion of first street a one-way street. And now on the second subject, I read that uh, a city planner from right here in Snohomish County, the city of Muckleteo, will replace Owen Dennison, who left the, uh, the area for the quiet life on Whitby Island. And as you know, back in April, I opposed the city spending a whopping $22,000 for a private recruiter to hunt nationwide for Owen's replacement. The recruiter, the recruiter hired was the Prothman Company. And I believe it was only Councilman Wild who agreed with me, or at least he questioned the wisdom of not looking first in Snohomish County for local talent before hiring a nationwide headhunter. However, the rest of the council rubber stamped the expensive process recommended by City Manager Bauman. Coincidentally, the new planning director, like Larry Bauman, was in the newspaper business and even worked for the city of Shoreline, Larry Bauman's previous employer. So I'll quote what the mayor said back in April directly from the minutes. Quote, it takes professional expertise to help with this recruitment. Madam Mayor, you in effect said Larry Bauman and Pat Adams don't have any professional experience in hiring a planning director. Then why do we have a city manager being paid close to $150,000 per year in base salary? Uh, and uh, I'll skip over something. And, and basically, hiring and firing is the most important duty of a city manager. And again, you could have saved $22,000 by merely placing an ad in the Everett Herald, Seattle Times, or Tacoma News Tribune for a planning director. It would have cost only a few hundred dollars. Finally, in summary, the city manager and council waste taxpayer money. $25,000 for an open government report for ideas already, most of them submitted by individual citizens, costing no money. $22,000 for the profit company. And uh, when the city manager could easily have uh, recruited the planning, uh, an HR director could have recruit the planning director instead. And then 15000 and possibly a lot more to the mayor's private attorney, even though the recall was withdrawn, according to today's Tribune. So where I come from, 62000 is serious money that shouldn't be wasted. And that's just for three examples since April. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. So we have Ms. Hopkins. I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. OK. Um, we have Alicia Clifton. <coughs> my name is Alicia. I'd like to start off by saying to the mayor that I am responding to one of your Facebook posts. These are your words. The kids were told the city was going to remove the skate park. That's definitely not true, and it's too bad the kids were used to promote someone else's agenda. These are my words. I love how you took my son's expressed concerns from the last city council meeting and dismissed them. You also turn the boys' concerns into a political blame game. Instead of taking the boys' concerns to face value, you have to say that they were lied to. I am pretty sure that I'm a concerned mother who knows when her son is being lied to. I was there with my son when he was holding up those signs, and I made damn sure that he understood why. All my son said at the meeting on July 5th was that any construction done to the Hall Mole Pool or on that property would affect the skate park. He said seniors might complain about the skaters, and any new buildings would need parking lots. And if anything happened to the skate park, the kids who have a passion for skateboarding, scootering, and biking could turn to drugs and crime. Those all seem like very valuable concerns to me. The boys express their concerns about the Hall Mole Pool and which the property that the Hall Mole Pool stands on. The boys have very justifiable concerns about their skate park. Are the kids wrong? I don't think so. Those kids are more right than any of us adults who were in that meeting on July 5th. I wish you would give the boys the credit that they deserve for being sharp and articulate, not to mention having the guts to show up to a city council meeting. I am raising my children to have a voice, and trust me when I say this, my son will make sure that his voice is heard. I am sorry that you cannot handle when our youth is fighting for what they believe in. None of the boys ever said that the skate park was going to be torn down. The only people who kept saying that were the people sitting on the city council on July 5th. It's, it absolutely sickens me to know that our chair talks down about the citizens of Snohomish, especially the children. Is that the type of chair we want right in our city? I believe that all voices need to be heard, even the youth, and even if we don't agree with each other. I don't believe in people making accusations about other people's children, especially when they were not there. So with that being said, I wish all the citizens of Snohomish good luck on choosing a strong mayor or not. Thank you for letting me speak.
about whether or not Jerry could sing on First Street, a third grade boy, whom I tutored, with Jerry by my side, told me I needed to meet the mayor. She would help us. I found her at Yoga Circle Studio, and she did help, along with the attorney and the city manager. Jerry can now sing on First Street whenever he wants, with amplification, in front of any business that allows him, and many businesses allow him. I've been Jerry's full-time care caregiver for six plus years. And two years later, when I needed emotional help, 
I came to Karen, and I said, Karen, I'd like, to, I'd really like to be in yoga. I don't know if I can afford it. She said she would not charge for Jared. And I'm there under a senior discount. And I go, we go together six days a week. And it's very calm for both of us. And very good for me emotionally, physically, and mentally. And Jerry can be upset of before going in and completely calm in coming out. Thank you, Karen, for that. I'm not finished. I have personally experienced Karen picking up trash on First Street, helping elderly, and guiding so many of us in yoga to take good care of ourselves, opening and opening her home to nonprofit fundraisers and listening intently no matter how busy she is. How many of us can say we followed that example? Yet she never would judge one of us for not doing these things. She's only supportive of everyone I've seen and leads by her example. We come here tonight to speak and to sing in gratitude for Karen as mayor, to the police for always being there and doing their very best for protecting us, crime and drugs. Thank you, thank you. For the firemen who come to the homes of elderly and replace the smoke detectors and visit with us and check in on us. To the city council, the city attorney, and the city manager, who have all worked well together to make our little city one of the brightest spots in the whole state. One of the big, biggest things I've learned at Karen's classes, one of the big things is when you breathe, if you need to calm down, you make your exhales longer than your inhale. So to the inhale to the count of five and exhale to the count of seven would calm you down. And just the opposite if you need energy. Inhale longer than the exhale. I have used that so many times. Good. And so we're going to exhale now. We're running out of time. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your comments. So we have next we have Bill Benton. So it's been a long six months. Um, a lot of controversy. I think we all have, uh, we want what's best for this town. Some people may have different ideas, but at the end of the day, um, we all love this community. <clears throat> July 19th, 2016. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, government are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its power in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. I cannot speak for the entire community of Snohomish that we all love. I'm here speaking for 218 registered voters of Snohomish. Our successful citizen-driven petition to alter or to abolish our form of government is the first in the history of Snohomish that truly may effectively change the course of city government. And we live by three little words. We the people. We the people tell the government what to do. It doesn't tell us. We the people are the driver. The government is a car. And we decide where it should go and by what route and how fast. 
Almost all the world's constitutions are documents in which governments tell the people what their privileges are. Our constitution is a document in which we, the people, tell the government what it is allowed to do. We, the people, are free. Thank you.
same concept has been extended to the citizens in our community across the country. We benefit from the concept in Snohomish because we have a, con a uh, corporation where we've elected our city council members, we've directed them to hire professional management to run the affairs committee. This model has seen us well through good times and hard times. I can remember when we had to cut staff. Today, we're harvesting the benefits of our efforts. Our management team has turned our community into a viable entity. And you may have noticed that the streets are being repaired, the sewer waste problem has been addressed, and, we, and the wildlife and other parts we've added. The public has spoken, the council and management has acted. The long-term plan is working. Thank you, Mayor Kuzak, council members, city, con city manager Larry Bauman, and staff. The same form of administration is present in the school district. The recent superintendent <coughs> brought the community together. He rebuilt the school infrastructure, and one of the resulting benefits that we enjoy today is the world-class aquatic center. <coughs> Professional management works. As many of you know, there's been lots of times when I haven't been quite as positive as I am tonight. <laughs> and uh, I was very dissatisfied at one time, and so I ran for office and was elected to city council. And it quickly became apparent to me that it takes two years for a person on city council to understand what's going on. And, and are we just, just gonna, I'm just, I'm I'm just done. That, so what I'm saying is we have a system that's working. We need to stick with that system. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fultz. I don't have any more names on our list, but I'm very open to anybody who would like to speak to us. Please go. Yeah, can you come to the to the podium? We can bring a microphone to you if you like. We've got a microphone for you. Okay. So name and address, if you will, name and address, please. Uh, my name is Marie Coloza. My address is 904 Cleveland Avenue, apartment 101, Snohomish, 98290. And my question for the city council is, what do I have to do to be able to take a Sunday stroll on the sidewalks down First Street with my grandkids without getting chucked out of my wheelchair? Um, there's many sections where it's not just cracks, the sidewalk has got, like, they're uneven. Um, I tried to go to the Thursday night market a couple weeks ago, and we went, my, we took my wheelchair and went on the corner of First Street and Cedar, and the only place we could go down was at the corner. So we go down, there's a big hole, and my friend almost threw me in the street. So my question is, what do I have to do to be able to get around Snohomish without falling out of my wheelchair or being thrown out? Well, we accept your complaint, and, and we will certainly turn it over to our public works director. Um, Mr. Shuler, do you want to deal with this later, or do you want, he's going to give you your, his card right now and be available to talk to you. We appreciate it. Yeah, I'd like to meet in person with you if I can, just understand. Obviously. It's a lot of historic area, and some of it is millions of dollars to it, but I think there might be some, just some quick fixes we can do that make a big difference. So okay. Okay. I'd like to meet you, you when you have a chance. Yes, okay, good. Thanks, and thanks, Maria. We appreciate it. So I saw some other people moving toward the podium. We'd be glad to hear from you. Melody Clemens, 313 Avenue B. Um, I don't have anything prepared tonight. I'm um, just reflecting and just wanted to say that in 2000, my life changed. It changed so much for the better. I made a decision that I wanted to become a part of this town kind of again. I was born and raised here, but that doesn't mean I participated. Uh, so I joined your group. I joined your service club. And it gave me so much for 15 wonderful years. One thing it gave me was a real awareness of what our city was all about, what our government was all about. Um, so ultimately, I sat on city council with five people. 
Uh, and two of you I, I haven't done, uh, but I do know Michael, and I have been sorry for that. But I can tell you, all of you, that we have a wonderful, hard-working city council. And like Mr. Fulton said, um, it takes a couple of years to really understand. And it really takes participation in this town to understand what it means to govern. Um, I just want to say thank you to all the council members here, to our city manager and our entire staff uh, for all of our work we do. It did take me probably two years if I asked five of you if I had taken four years to figure out what I was doing with council. But it changed me. Um, and I um, have a great deal of regard and a great deal of respect for this town. It hasn't always been easy. I was on council when this recession, or the great recession hit. And I watched our city staff and our city manager present to our council a budget that would work. Um, and it wasn't easy. There were terrible times as far as layoffs were concerned. You know, you know, we came out of that, and we came out strong. Uh, and uh, we have a strong budget now. Uh, we have a strong government. Uh, um, and we're in pretty good financial shape. And so we have our staff, our city manager, and our city council to thank for that. So I'm just here to thank you for all of our Thank you, Ms. Clemens. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm Kelly Lloyd, I live at 725 Mount Avenue in Sohomish, and I've been a resident of the county, of the outer county, for eight years, and then in town for another eight years. And I just want to offer my appreciation for our city staff and our city council. Last summer, between jobs, I had the privilege of being here for almost every city council meeting and just absorbing the culture of our government and had a profound gratitude for the way that was practiced. I think our council comes from a spectrum of backgrounds and beliefs um, and participates in respectful debate with each other, listening carefully to citizen debate, listening carefully to the city staff and their information and recommendations, sometimes shifting what looked to be in the direction of the council vote, not always in the way that I would have chosen, but in the way that I found to be very respectful. And I think that's mainly because we, although we come from different backgrounds, we have shared values which are the health and vitality of our city and citizens. And that we focus on brainstorming for improvements. And when people ask me what I like about Snohomish or what makes it special, I tend to respond that it's a caring town that works together um, with engaged people to improve our city. And so I'm offering my profound gratitude for your support. Thank you so much, Ms. Lyon. We appreciate that. Anybody else like to speak um, and some comments on any subject of yours? Yes. Any other items? Um, yes, Megan. Um, I need to actually apologize, but I'd like to reiterate. Marie. Yes, Marie. Marie. I'd like to um, just reiterate Marie's um, statements about the sidewalks and safety. I have a son who walks in town and a frequent conversation is avoid this area, avoid that area, so that you don't trip and fall from the lives. And, um, and it's, it's bad to say, don't go on the spot, don't go there. We came home actually just a few days ago with the kids mm -hmm. and she tripped on the family sidewalks um, about face um, And I, I'm not saying this as a, as a threat, that's not right at all where I'm coming from. I have forgotten many times to pick up the phone and call and say, what the heck? Um, the sidewalks in the um, particular way in that kind and uh, how much cool area, but also I think on the 10th, maybe 13th, some other areas, um, they're very, very dangerous. And so when I say this next part, I know that there are just been cities that have been sued for these kinds of things, so I think it's really important um, to handle that. And when you have a gentleman like Mark Davis sort of saying, look, it's going to be here, here, and here. And then you've got a serious public safety issue that is constantly overlooked. It could cost an individual quite a bit of money um, in their injuries or their life or the city. And I think that's 